Okay. I'm just going to wait a minute or two, wait for some people to pop in while I also check whether <clears throat> I can get the man on Skype. Let me do that, see if this works. I'm just waiting to see if the uh, Skype call that I'm doing works. Okay, it seems like it's sort of up. Uh, ah, now I'm wondering whether I can hear the man. Hello. Can, Hello, you, can you hear me now? Uh, I can. I can't hear you, but that might be my fault. Hold on a second. Oh, this is going to sound horrible, probably. Just speak, Ian. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm okay. here. Good. I can hear you. How do I sound? Probably horrible. but Is the sound okay? It's, yeah, it sounds good to me. Okay, I'm not sure what you guys are seeing on your screens. I'm seeing Ian, of course. Um, I think it might switch between the two of us, or I don't know. I'm just playing around with this, haven't done this before. So while you guys tune in, we'll quickly mess around with this a little bit. Okay, all I can see is you on my screen, Ian. I don't know what everybody else can see. You guys that are in the chat? Okay, sound is not too bad. Excellent. What about the screen? What are you looking at? Or what can you guys see? Can you see both of us? Can you just see one of us? Uh, all I see is uh, your avatar. Yeah, you're on Skype, so you probably won't see the chat, but I, I can see the okay. chat here. Um, so. Cool. And... Uh, well, we're at 11 people. Come on, one of you guys that's got hands and can type. Tell me what you can see on your screens. Maybe they can't hear me, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Happy face. All right. Uh, video only shows your guest. All right, cool. Well, it, it doesn't matter if it only shows my guest. Um, let's see. There's got to be a way to do both. Oh, there we go. So you've got me on the little bottom corner now, I think. Is that correct? Oh, I think I can make myself a bit bigger. There. Right, I'm just now like hovering over his head. Is that correct? Cam is just on your beard, so maybe you can move back a little bit so that we, instead of getting a close-up of your beard and nostrils, we get the whole face. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, I couldn't, I couldn't see myself at all, so. Okay, you're still kind of a big head. If you can move a bit to your left, then we can, they can see both of us. That's it. All right. And if you can move a little bit back. All right, let's see how this works. Perfect. We're getting almost 20 Good people. Deal. Excellent. Okay, you can see both of us. I'm. Uh, I put myself just beside you as a as a little screen. Yeah. Cool. So, uh, for those of you that have just tuned in, this is of course um, Ian McLeod, my ancient enemy from the Highlander. Of course, McLeod clan. That's right. There you go. There can only be one. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> uh, the the thing that upsets me the most is. Somebody else took his head. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. So he was uh, deplatformed recently, and I'm going to let him tell that story. But um, 
I wanted to let you know a couple of things. He makes the t-shirts um, called from Crypto Fashion is his company and they do a bunch of really cool shirts. I've got a couple of them, I've got a number of them. And they also do the, the Kurgan t-shirt, which uh, says Catholic, not Novos Orco, and has got the, um, Pope Urban II's uh, papal crown on it as well. Uh, it's a very cool shirt. I really like it. Good material. And just so you guys know, um, there is a GoFundMe, which I've put the link in the description for this video, so I hope it's coming up Thanks. somewhere. So... Um, go to it. it it doesn't matter if you've only got a buck to throw at it throw at it because i'll explain why from my perspective it's not about the t-shirts he makes for me because i've i've told ian long ago whatever t-shirts he sells that are kurgan t-shirts he keeps every cent I, I don't get anything i don't want anything um he does good work he's a good guy and i i know his brother as well and they're very hard working people who you know, they just have a business. They just make T-shirts. Um, they got the platform because you know people like me and others uh, are some of the guys that they make T-shirts for. So support him, and um, I'm gonna let him tell his story now about how he got kicked off and what he thinks that's about and how that happened and so on. Sure, um, that happened uh, last week, and uh, I guess it was Tuesday. I got an email from our storefront provider saying that they were going to cut off our merchant account, which is, you know, your main credit card processor for Visa, MasterCard, yeah. uh, Discover. And, um, but they said that with the caveat that we were still welcome to use the storefront platform as long as we found a different merchant service. So um, I was like, well, that's a setback, but, you know, that's something we can live with. But uh, then two days later, I get another email from them, a different department, and uh, they said, yeah, we're completely terminating your account, and you're no longer welcome to work with us. And uh, so, yeah, that's, that's the uh, basic version of what happened. And in the emails, you know, they don't tell you a specific reason. Like, they won't tell you what rule you violated or uh, what uh, what went wrong. And they don't give you any opportunity to fix it. Like, no, of course. No, that, I think, yeah. you know, we, we're, we're well aware that uh, that's, the, uh, that's the communist way, isn't it? It, it is. Uh, it it's, is. It's the two minutes of hate. And Ian McLeod is it this week. <laughs> <laughs> that's me. That's yeah. me. Um, but... Yeah, go ahead, sir. Um, but yeah, um, the response to that from our side has been amazing. Like, uh, you know, if you go and look at the GoFundMe, uh, we've exceeded our goal. And um, yeah, but I mentioned been, that in social media. I, I know that you originally asked only for uh, two and a half thousand dollars, but I also right. know because. You know, I, I know, I've known Ian for a number of years, and I know a bunch of the other people involved that are trying to help him um, reset up his uh, his website and so on. And I, I know for a fact mm. that that two and a half grand would just barely cover the costs of getting you back up. It doesn't sure. cover, you know, your time. It doesn't cover the, the time that you've been offline. It doesn't cover necessary expenses of your brother, your other family members that are involved trying to get this carry on doing this while there's no income because the site is down it doesn't cover your own fees your own you know income at all mm -hmm. and uh, another thing I hope you don't mind I'm just gonna tell people but you know Ian was extremely um, unwell uh, not too long ago and yeah. um, he essentially nearly died um, yes so he's just getting a little you know getting healthier from that uh, I don't know what details if any you want to share about that but anyway that's that's for you to say or not say but the thing mm -hmm. is um, you know he's been through a very very difficult rough time as it is so um, if I can help them out a little bit I can and as soon as the sites back up I fully expect all of you to go and get yourself uh, 
a nice Kurgan t-shirt that upsets everybody. It doesn't say the Kurgan, yes. it, it just says Catholic, not Novus Orco. And then that, in, I know people that have worn it. <laughs> I've seen somebody <laughs> sent me a picture of it in the wild. And I know it definitely starts conversations. Um, some th <laughs> I think the guy who emailed me said something like, I keep getting asked about this, and as soon as I explain it, they either run off in fear or, or like get interested and question me more about it. So it, <laughs> it seems to be a somewhat safe uh, uh, icebreaker, I guess. But um, yeah, how do you know how far you are from from getting back up yet? Or um, my team is working on. They've decided to take two slightly, well, not slightly. They've decided to take two different paths and see which one gets there first, basically, because both systems have their ups and downs. Yeah. And so one system, you know, they might get it online, and then we find out, oh, well, this was a complete waste of time. And then, uh, yeah. so, so two concurrent developments. Um, we're hoping to have something online later this week. Um, it may just be limited with like a few products from each of our clients' categories, yeah. and then we'll rebuild from there. Yeah. But, um, and yeah. so just you know, I'm uh, as you know, technologically somewhat illiterate intentionally, but um, so you can't just are, are you having um, the storefront facility, let's say, is that being built from scratch, or are you using some? We're using out-of-the-box software, but it runs on a private server, so okay. it won't be vulnerable to uh, deplatforming. Right. Like open source software. I've got some uh, questions. I'm just going to read quickly, just go through some of the comments because the, the guys are. Um, let me just quickly scroll sure. back. Uh, just a guest. Okay. Yes. Good. Okay. Watchmen Unite, that's Peter Birdsell. Okay, I'm not sure what that means, but it sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, Wrong Think, that's exactly what it was, Wrong Think. It wasn't even their yes. Wrong Think. They're, they're just printing shirts for people who have Wrong Think. And uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Have you found a non-Western payment processor? That's from Woolly Ram, my man in Israel. We have a couple that we're looking into. The thing with payment processors is it takes time to get uh, your application fulfilled yeah. because they do thorough background checks. We have the Patriot Act and all that yeah. that we have to comply with. So there are a couple who have good reputations for uh, you know being pro-free speech or whatever, and um, but we have to have an, a workable website before they'll even look at us. Yeah. Okay. You know? So, is, is it like a month before they look into it, or is it a week, or do you know? Uh, it can be two weeks to a month, yeah. Right. It just depends. Okay, well, um, you know, there's a bunch of people behind you, as you know, obviously, the, the Dreadill, the Vile Faceless Minions, yeah. Voxel, I'm sure, no doubt, put you, you know a post on the blog when you guys are back up and running. Of course. Um, oh, and I've got a comment here that... Uh, uh, from Thalios, all of my CF t-shirts start conversations from time to time. I'll tear up Paris and drop it, especially. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Drop it was the second design we came up with ever. Um, that, the f I don't know yeah. if everybody knows what that looks like. Do you want to maybe just describe it? Or? Yeah, it's a, um, it's a B-52 bomber in a peace sign. <laughs> and it has the word drop it underneath. Yeah. yeah, that was one of my favorites. Yeah. I was actually wearing that when I went on to Rikita's show on Monday. Oh yes, I saw I saw part of that, and then it yeah. just it sort of cut out, didn't it, halfway through or something? Yeah, yeah. yeah so I don't also... have a really good broadcasting setup yet, so I'm gonna have to build one, I think. Oh, dude, uh, you can see what mine. I put mine in black and white just because I like it better than the color. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> And yet, the mistress of sound says, uh, the sound of butthurt, indeed. Yes. Yeah. Um, look, it's, um, you know, it's interesting times, but the thing is, I, I actually think that once you get back on, it will probably 
be a boost to your company. There was, I believe so. There was something that I saw, uh, one of the guys put up online that was funny. Um, there's apparently this uh, fishing shop and hunting equipment shop called Balls Deep. <laughs> 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 and they did an awesome, awesome thing on Twitter. I think they, 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 could, they took a picture of um, a mounted fish with like a hook in its mouth and and below it, it says, I can't breathe. <laughs> and of course, that went viral and people, um, some guy said something like uh, on Twitter, said like, I expect that there will be an apology for coming from you. And, you know, this is unacceptable and so on. And their response on Twitter was just awesome. Um, I'm just going to see great. if I can find it because it was, uh, just give me a second, it was actually hilarious. And it was... Uh, let's see if I can get there. Uh, give me one second, guys. I'm sorry. I know how boring sure. it is when somebody's looking for something online, but <laughs> it is somewhere in here. Uh, right. So the... the this, I, I can't, it's on my phone, so I doubt you can see it very well. But that was the thing that set everybody off. And, um, yeah, and some guy, basically, uh, a guy called Matthew Moore, like on Twitter, mm -hmm. put in something like, um, I bet you'll release a statement saying that you're sorry if you offended anyone. It was in bad judgment. Please forgive me. And then, like, he's got all these laugh emojis. <laughs> and the response, <laughs> the response from Balls Deep Tackle, that's what they are. The response was like, it has come to our attention that we may have offended some people in the past few days. It is with deep regret that we did not issue this statement sooner. Our statement is as follows. We apologize for nothing. Suck these nuts. If you don't like it, suck these nuts. If you think we care that we lost customers, suck these nuts. Matthew Moore, especially, you can suck these nuts. <laughs> it's just, That's fantastic. I mean, I don't know how to do like online investment, but if I, if I, if I did, I'd buy stock because I'm sure that these guys are going up now. And, no, uh, you know, I... I well, you know me, so you know how I am. I'm not going to tell of you course. how to run your business because that would probably be a very bad idea. But, <laughs> um, you know, I think that taking that approach is the right way to go. So, um, I, I agree. It's, I mean, and it's really something we should have done sooner. We just didn't have it. We didn't have it in budget to get a uh, professional to do it, and I didn't have time to learn how to do it. So, yeah. Um, but you know you live and well, learn. That, and you see, that's the, the thing with, with with guys like us. We like again, you know, we're all lone crusaders on our own little path, and that's that's why yeah. I'm doing this little video. Even though you know I've only got like a couple of thousand followers, and there's mm -hmm. a couple of I've actually thought about the numbers earlier today. There's like I'm just hovering under the two thousand subscribers at, on YouTube. But then yeah. whenever I do a video, there's about between four and six hundred that watch at least some of it mm -hmm. um, and when I do the live streams like this it usually tops up at about 50 60 something like that That's good. so um, but the interesting thing is that you know these people have an effect it has a ripple effect and I've noticed uh, just it, it, it the way it works is very interesting because I would rather have 50 loyal people that know what to do and and that do things mm -hmm. like, you know, I'll get guys that email me and say, look, I listened to your video. We are doing that. We're going to buy some land. Do you know of any other Catholics near us and whatever? And these are little guys, you know, the, the one guy that flew me to the States, he's just one guy. Mm -hmm. And now he's doing that. You know, he got baptized. He got his daughter baptized. He's starting up a little small farm and he's going to try and see if he can get other people to live near him so that they have like a little community. So the city mm -hmm. states are eventually going to happen, and it's um, you know, yeah. the thing that I want to keep getting across to people is how quickly, when you work together, you can develop something very very fast. Yes. So, yes. 
Is there any way to find out who initiated the deplatforming? Well, the way I would say it was, uh, who was the, the provider of the, the software? Was it Shopify or? Yeah, it was Shopify. Right. So now you know who not to use because it's not yes. just a, it's not just about getting these guys back up or getting people to get kicked off back on. There's the, to me, there's there's three things that matter. One is the guy who gets kicked off has to fight, right? Mm -hmm. And I was a bit critical of Stefan Molyneux recently because I, I, that guy doesn't fight. I don't, I don't think he's a fighter. Right. I know you guys are, and I know you guys will come yeah. back just because you know it's in that southern blood. You're not going right. to let Yankee kick you off. <laughs> Scottish, Scottish heritage and all that, too. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we, we have our generational feud forever, so. Th there you go. So, you know, so, you, yeah. you've got to fight. <laughs> and the other thing exactly. is people like us need to, like, you know, stick together in terms exactly. of supporting each other and whatever. Exactly. And it's not about, you know, there's no, the way I see it, it the, to me, this is like Sistema. There's no leader. Yes. Who can kick whose ass? That that guy's the leader for that day. It's it's the Russian system, you know. It's like cosmonauts. Like mm -hmm. cosmonauts don't have yeah. They have the captain. They have the crewman in theory. In practice, when cosmonauts are in space, the guy that knows how to solve the problem, he's the leader, and everybody does whatever that guy says. They're all his bitch while he's got the best skills. And this is the same, mm -hmm. you know. The, I don't I don't believe that there should be necessarily a leader. If and remember, those of you that are listening, if you do want to make me your leader. It's uh, it's a complete dictatorship. So, don't, you know, <laughs> it's best for you to just do your own thing, probably. But right. yeah, the the important thing is to make sure that we stick onto the same side of things. Yeah, exactly. We're we're all allies in this. Yeah. Oh, uh, and the mistress of sound, Alicia, uh, says, "Let me know if you want. You know, like people that want to offer." skills or help or whatever maybe just drop me an email and i'll forward it to you and then if he wants to get in touch you can get in touch with you yes, um, I'm yes just being a little you know ian is pretty out there he's uh as you know his name is known mcleod you know that evil guy yes. um but alicia says i'm super poor but super talented if you need art music whatever let me know i'm super disabled and stuff too so mm -hmm. I have time and no need for compensation or recognition. Okay, now okay. We, we always try to give compensation and recognition uh, when we can. So, that, yeah, uh, that's something that's very important to me and that I can't stress enough. The uh, developers who are working on my site dropped everything and said that they would do it for free. And on the one hand, I appreciate that. But on the other hand, I believe that a laborer is worthy of his hire. Yeah. So I don't, I don't accept free from anybody. If you contribute to us, we'll give you something. It may only be a nominal fee. Um, if you want to get T-shirts, we'll send you some T-shirts. You know, something like that. But yeah, we don't. Uh, I only accept free underdress. <laughs> and I don't like that. <laughs> so, well, yeah, but okay. I, I, you know, I know the guys that are helping you out, and we yes. also know that they probably prefer to, um, for very good reasons, maybe remain anonymous to a certain extent or whatever. But you know, yeah, you know, I mean, and they'll get something for their efforts. Yeah, yeah, no, I, they, I know you they will, deserve it. Yeah, I know, I know that you will pay them. Um, that's part of the, the GoFundMe. But yeah. yeah. Okay, um, I don't know if there's anything else you want to say or show a t-shirt of yours if you've got one lying around. Or... Man, I uh, will not do that today, but um, if anybody has any other questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Okay, there's about 26 people. Any questions for Ian? Shoot them now. Or otherwise, yeah. we're probably going to say bye in a couple of minutes. Yeah. Um, Shopify is SJW. Canadian. Well, yes, it, yes. <laughs> I didn't know they were Canadians, but there you go. They are, and uh, that's why we kind of we didn't really censor our clients, but we put we led them to stay just this side of the line, yeah. you know, as far as acceptable use, and um, you know, everybody was fine with that. They understood that you know they had to abide by the rules. Of yeah. our platform but um, yeah you there is no real line and that's the important thing to take away from this yes. they can just 
arbitrarily move it whenever they want. That's exactly right. There is no line, and uh, you just brought something up that's um, yeah, that's very important to remember. Um, when I was looking at that balls deep guys, I sort of went on their website, and they they actually sell T-shirts as well that are definitely they cross the line. They go completely the other way. It's it's like yeah. They don't give a fuck, and I, I'm yeah. guessing that that's because they've got their own site and their own uh, system. So mm-hmm. it's like, screw you, mm-hmm. we can do what we want. Yeah, but more than that's likely. Pretty much, I think that's where you're going next. Really, essentially, you're going to yes. become like that as well soon. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna have our own system. We're gonna be as uh, as immune to any future issues as possible. But it's not possible to be 100% immune because there's always that payment gateway issue. Yeah. But um, but eventually but there'll be a way around that too because there's going to be Chinese payment processors, there's going to be Russian yes. payment processors. I've yes. looked into that a little bit because I'm you know I'm quite forward looking. I was look, trying to find this out about five years ago, and it's just mm-hmm. I could never find the right person to talked with me about it and uh, you know my Russian is not good enough to call up Russia somebody <laughs> in Russia and say what's going on um, right I did get some prices and stuff but it wasn't very clear what what they were offering but yeah it's it's coming it's gonna be coming. yeah um, yeah yeah that Alipay is already starting to come up over here and once they really get established then it's it's gonna be interesting it's gonna be very interesting and in fact, they're one of the things, one of the companies I'm looking into. I don't like the Chinese that much, but, you know, sometimes you just got to do business. Dude, you know, the, the way I look at it is like, uh, you use the enemy's weapons against him. You know, like, yes. people's like, oh, get off Facebook. And I, there's very good reasons to not be on Facebook. Right. But if I can use their own tools to, like, be a problem in their, in their side, yeah, why not? Yeah. All right. Well, I believe that I'm out of time right now because I have a pile of shirts that I need to ship. Oh, good. So, so um, is there, just so quickly before you go, is there uh, still a way that people can order shirts while your shop is down or is there a way to do that? No, not right now. This is just, a, I'm dealing with the backlog of inventory that's finally coming in after COVID from our main suppliers. So. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I'm I'm catching up even while the site is down. Good. So some of you, if you have a late order, then you should probably start looking for that. Okay, good. All right, Ian, well, thanks for coming on. Uh, hey, thank you for having me. Let's let me do just this again. quickly look if there's any other quick questions at the end. Oh, Shopify yeah. is the highest valued Canadian company at the moment. Sounds like they took the yeah. ticket. Yeah, they are in, wow. That light finally came on. Um, but yeah, they are incredibly huge. Their market cap today is 124 B, whatever that means. Well, let's see if we can bring that down. <laughs> yes, yes. I, I would not complain. Okay, I'm going to let you go. Um, I think we'll carry right. on here a little bit. So, not sure exactly how to do that. Oh, I think I just hang up the Skype. All right. Good night, Ian. All right. Thank you. Have a good one. You too. Bye. Bye. That's just back to me now, is it? Ah, here we go. All right. Well, that was that call. If you guys have any questions about anything, this is one of your, uh, you know, 10 minutes. And hopefully it doesn't stretch out to 15 hours of uh, ask me anything type stuff. Good luck, looking forward to your return. Thank you, sir. Uh, yeah, Ian is a great guy. He's uh, he's a very loyal man, and so is his brother, and they're both actually very funny. He was quite serious there, but um, I, uh, I really like them both. And uh, his brother does awesome impressions. He does awesome, in, like, pretend English people um, accents. Very good, very, very good. So, uh, okay, unless you guys have something else to ask me or talk about, I will probably say good night because I've done a couple of long ones recently. So, I'm going to give you another minute.
Got anything to ask? Do it now or hold your peace. Baron von Blair. I, I was thinking, Baron von Blair is the guy we, we spoke yesterday about something, and I can't remember. It was about Catholicism, getting married and having kids. But uh, you're, you're always here, so thanks for always showing up. Stefan is too much of a scholar priest. You see, Wooly Ram. Wooly Ram has read some of the books I've read, clearly. You've read the... Uh, Messages from Michael, I would guess. Interesting book. Uh, I wouldn't even say that Stefan is a scholar or a priest because a scholar actually catalogs things. To a certain extent, Vox is a scholar. Uh, to a certain extent. And he's not a priest. Yeah, maybe he's a priest. Because I suppose he tries to inspire people or whatever. But I don't know, there's just nothing there, there. You know, there was, oh, I don't know, what, what, I'll quickly link this to it. That's how my brain works. A guy called John Mack uh, disappeared. Yes, he is adult. Uh, Mistress of Sound has got it absolutely right. Molino is adult. He's just one of these wishy-washy, doesn't get it. You know, he's just, I don't know, wasting his time. But this guy called John, is it John Mack? I think it is. Who's one of these... Uh, Oh, what do they call themselves? A proprietarian, who was a follower of a guy called Doolittle. And I said this is about two years ago. One of the guys on the one of the Dreadhill mentioned them and said, What are these crazy morons talking about? And I looked into it for about four, I don't know, five, ten minutes, and I read through some of their stuff, and I was like, uh, these guys are just incels. It's just another breed of incel that, you know, is mentally masturbating away about their fantastic, super clever ideas. So this John Mack, apparently what happened, he, they had some meeting or some seminar or something, and a Black Lives Matter guy got there and started talking to them, and their head honcho, their head guru, who I think was being somewhat confronted about what is this white supremacy shit you guys are doing, because... They are all about, you know, saving Western civilization and the white race and stuff like that, I guess. I don't know. I haven't looked into that much. Um, and what th their main leader goes, well, you know, it's all about biology. Really, all we're talking about is you, you guys have got bigger dicks and you're stronger than us. So it's OK. And they all laughed about it. And then they gave the microphone to the black guy who was like uh, saying, today, I'm the change. Today, I'm the change. And all of everybody there was like, today, I'm the change. <laughs> so, <laughs> All the alt retards that have been following these guys thinking, yes, white genocide ends here. We are now <laughs> going to be the, the great new white buffalo or whatever. They all got pissed off. And uh, I guess they talked shit about him. Whatever. He just, he had like 100,000 followers on YouTube and he just disappeared. He went totally offline, just disappeared from everything. Was like, That's it. I've got to change my priorities, look after my family. <laughs> it's like... And I think his part in comment was along the lines of, you know, the problem with this is that too many guys on our side are against us and too many people are just too stupid. It takes a certain level of intelligence to understand what we're about and to understand the system and to hold the line. Now, if your system requires you to have an IQ of 120 and understand all sorts of hoops you've got to jump through, you're an idiot. Your system's never going to work. You know, Catholicism was followed by illiterate peasants for literally centuries without a problem. You know, so you've got to get off your own head and your own high horse and your own like clever, clever, super clever ideas. They're not that clever. They're actually dumb. Heading out for work, night shift coming up. Wooly Ram, have a good evening, my friend. And uh, I, I'm not sure what work you do at night, but I hope it's all safe and good. And uh, yeah. Proprietarianism seems to be a honeypot. Really? For who? I mean, those guys, I'm telling you, there's no way that those guys are like surrounded by women, trust me. You, you're better off being like, I don't know. No, the, the, believe me, I've, I've read some of the stuff that those guys post online. <laughs> it's. Uh, <laughs> It's not exactly the image of, uh, you know, Conan surrounded by half-naked ladies that you, that you might think. 
I have no respect for Molyneux because he refuses to fight. I never had much respect for him to begin with because his ideas are just dumb. Um, and he, I can predict everything he's going to say for 15 minutes before he says it, so yeah. William Poole, if Protestants believe the Bible says whatever they say it means, does that mean that they believe that it means nothing in actuality, or are they acting as Jesus by interpreting him? Beats me, you'd have to ask a Protestant. But um, yeah, generally speaking, you know, there's not a lot of difference between Jews and Protestants. You know, so-called Jews are basically Talmudic Jews, Pharisees, that believe the Talmud, follow the Talmud, and you know, I believe the saying is the Talmud allows what the Torah uh, forbids. Same thing, you know, if you're a Protestant, you're going to have your own special, super special interpretation. And if you're a weak Protestant, you're going to believe the super special interpretation of some other guy, and then you're going to follow that one. I mean, I'll tell you a little story about uh, some people I peripherally knew that were Protestants and that would argue vehemently against Catholicism, blah, blah, blah. But these guys belong to a church where if you so much as kissed a girl, right, you would have to stand up in the church, confess your sin, and the whole church led by the so-called pastor would shame you for your sinful, lustful behavior. And pretty much everybody in the church at some point or other got that treatment. I mean, that's a cult. That, that's not church. It's got nothing to do with anything. It's just nonsense. John Mark. There you go. Sorry, not Mac. John Mark. Yeah. Never trust a man who's got two first names. Who said that? I don't know. I can't remember who said that. Dale Spult. What is good rhetoric to use against Protestants? Oh, I could go on all night. Good rhetoric against Protestants. Well, it's always good to base it in dialectic. First rule, sola scriptura. Only the Bible counts. So what do they do? First thing that their guy does, change the Bible. Ripped out seven books from the Bible. Now, if you actually meet a literate Protestant, a Protestant that knows a bit what he's saying, he's going to tell you that physically, uh, you know, uh, Martin Luther himself didn't actually take books out of the Bible in his translation. He just kind of moved them around a little bit. Doesn't matter. The rhetoric works. Whether he did it physically himself or others, I don't care. I know they took out seven books of the Bible. That's why if you have a Catholic Bible, it's got the dragon in it, it's got the bit with Daniel in it, it's got Maccabees in it, it's got James in it, which, you know, they couldn't rip the whole thing out, so they kind of said, no, but it's not really part of the Bible, it's sort of apocryphal. Yeah, it's not really interesting. Why do you think that is? Read James. James is a very small book of the Bible. Read James, and you'll understand why the Protestants had to take it out. So, it's sola scriptura, but it's not sola scriptura the Bible, it's sola scriptura Lutheran Bible after he's changed it. So only the Bible matters, but the first thing he does is he changes the Bible. Great. Also, if only the Bible matters, tell me, how was the Bible put together? Tradition doesn't count, right? So how was the Bible put together? Oh, wait, wait a fucking minute. The Bible was put together 300 years after Jesus ascended, roughly. Uh, and it was kept by tradition. In some cases, verbal tradition. In some cases, people simply memorizing a passage and repeating it. And having only pieces of the documents that eventually formed the Bible at a council. So there you go. And another good rhetorical thing based completely in dialectic is that their religion, their false religion, Protestantism, of which there are over 40,000 branches, was started by two sex perverts. Um, a, a supposed monk who wanted to bang nuns and who is on record as saying that if the wife is unwilling, you should just fuck the maid. And who spoke pretty much like that, like I just said it. Uh, who drank and ate to excess and said it was, you should sin powerfully. And um, a king that wanted to murder, divorce his wives when he got bored of them. Uh, those are the two guys that started Protestantism. Who started Catholicism? Jesus Christ. Bit of a difference, no? I mean, like I said, I can go on all night. Protestants are really easy to swat. And the other thing, of course, is that the only rule that the Protestants have is completely demonic. The only rule they have is interpret as thou wilt. That's their rule. That's the only rule they have. Interpret as thou wilt. Whose rule is that? It's, it's satanic. It's absolutely satanic. What is the only rule that the, the, the Protestants have? 
You must confess Jesus. You must recognize Jesus as Lord. That's all you need to be saved. Really? That is the standards of demons. Demons have that as a standard. Are demons Christians? Demons recognize Jesus as Lord. That's why they're scared of him. That's why it works in exorcism when you use his name. So Protestants have got the same standards of Christianity that demons have. There you go. There's four that should be enough to freak the hell out of any Protestant you come across. It'll, it'll definitely get their blood going. Uh, oh, Willie Ram, before he said goodbye, he says, uh, nothing short of a Christian revival and seven children a man will save the white race. <laughs> and that's coming from a Jew, boys. <laughs> you take that to the bank. <laughs> uh, yeah, pretty much. Fed setup equals honeypot. Oh, well, yeah, for the incels. I don't know. It's like all three thirds. It, to me, uh, they, they, well, whatever they call what? The proprietarians or whatever they call they're They're just another bunch of all three thirds, essentially, as far as I can tell. Okay, Dan says, great point. I figured it out myself a few days ago. I think he's talking about Woody Ram's phone. Baron van Blair. Yesterday, conceiving and adopting came up in the chat. Two people are building their families. I'd mentioned families, everything, and you encouraged us all. Thank you, Toby. Yeah, you, you're welcome. And, and dude, I don't know what your situation is, but you better be making kids with some nice lady. Woolly Ram Protestants and modern Jews are similar in iconoclastic tendencies. Not much else. <laughs> I, I uh, yeah, I agree with what Woolly Ram says. You're obviously got different belief systems but my point is they are essentially avoiding the truth they've got access to the book with the truth but they're avoiding the truth protestants online going to frenzy of anti-catholic diatribe or rhetoric if the catholic church is ever mentioned their fury is telling it is telling um, and there's a reason why they're anti-catholic and that's because they've been trained to be anti-catholic from birth um, and you, the approach to take that works best is to always insult their intelligence and their education. Because like atheists, they're always very proud about how well read they are. They say, well, if you're anti-Catholic, you're clearly a moron. You're clearly uneducated. You clearly haven't got a clue about the history of the church. And above all, you just believe a bunch of pack of lies. I mean, even Protestants that, are, that can read know this. Even Protestants will know this. Because, for example, a Protestant, Rodney Stark, wrote Bearing False Witness, debunking the centuries of anti-Catholic propaganda, which are lies. And he's not Catholic, but he's an honest man. And he's a historian. Why don't you know? You mean you don't know that? As a Protestant, you don't know the Catholic lies? Oh, oh, you must be one of those Appalachian-type Protestants, you know. Is your sister also your wife? You know, that sort of thing. And that really gets their goat. Archie Bear Kurgan, you have valid Protestantism criticism, but a Catholic saying Luther was a pervert is the pot calling the kettle black, given papal history. Yeah, but that's not the point. We had popes, valid popes, popes that are considered valid, that were all sorts of perverts. And I, I forget the details. I did read a whole book on the popes, but I don't remember, you know, there was over 200 of these guys, so it's not like I remember every single one. But yeah, let's say you had a pope that was a gay, orgiastic fraud. Like, he just stole money, had parties, bankrupted the Vatican, and was a complete sodomite. And there were definitely popes that did that. Uh, and pretty much all of them at once, too. Does that mean that he's not a valid pope? No, it doesn't. Because he might have done all of those things, but he did not impinge, attack, try to change or destroy Catholic dogma. So he was a bad guy. But the church knows this. The Catholic church knows this. Human beings are flawed. We're all completely fallen, dirty sewer rats. Every single one of us. The fact that a pope is can be a sewer rat is neither here nor there. It's irrelevant. It's not about what he does. You can blame what he does. You can certainly consider him a, a vile sinner, no, no doubt about it. But as long as 
he keeps the truth of the dogmatic um, teachings of the church, we've got no issue with it. You might not like him, you might think he's a complete scumbag, and he is, but hey, he's not destroying the, the dogmatic teachings of the church, it's fine. He keeps promulgating the same stuff, or maybe he doesn't even do anything because he lets other people do it, but that's fine. He's not affecting uh, the dogma of the church. So it's not about, uh, you know, saying Luther was a pervert, is the pot calling the kettle black. No, it's not. Because Luther was your Messiah. If you're a Protestant, Luther is your Messiah. That's who started your false religion. Who started my religion is Jesus Christ. There's a difference. Luther is your Jesus, right? That's it. Nothing would have come about if it wasn't for this monk who wanted to bang nuns and fuck the maid, apparently. I was thinking of the similarities between Protestants and Jews. You know, they've got very different uh, rituals and whatever, but my, my point about it was there is the Torah, the Old Testament, right? And modern Jews ignore that. They ignore that because the whole point of the Old Testament is a bunch of prophecies prophesizing when Jesus comes back. So they have to ignore that. And then they read the Talmud, which is commentary on the Torah. And in the Talmud, it tells you that you can fuck a two-year-old child. You know, and that's okay. And a nine-year-old, under nine years old, boy, woman, girl, whatever, all the same. You, you can fuck children. What the hell? You know, that's the Judaic religion of Talmud, the Talmudic Judaism. And Protestants are the same. They're, they've got the Bible. They kind of chopped and changed it, moved some stuff out, got the translation from from the, the, the Pharisees that fucked around with it for 700 years. That's a KGB, you know, King James Version. Yeah, King James Version has been fucked around with by Pharisees for 700 years before it was translated into English. So if you go to a Catholic Bible, it was from the Vulgate, which was a direct translation of the Greek into Latin and a much better translation and hasn't been fucked around with by, by Pharisees for 700 years. So, you know. Proprietarians are a small vocal clique, not much influence, and were dismissed over a year ago. Yeah, that, they're just inconsequential. Archie Bear, Archie Bear is looking to have his head taken today, apparently. My point is that calling Luther a pervert, and he was, is bad rhetoric. No, it's not bad rhetoric. It works. Look how it got you inflamed. Luther was a pervert, and that is your Jesus. See? Calling Luther the Protestant Messiah is inaccurate. Jesus is the Messiah. I know Jesus is the Messiah, but you Protestants don't know that. You're not following what Jesus said. You're following what some German guy wanted to drink beer, fuck nuns, and be a pig, basically. And uh, what a king that wanted to kill his wives when he was bored of them. You're following what those guys want to do. You're, uh, that's why Protestantism allows divorce. That's why Protestantism allowed contraception. That's why Protestantism allows abortion. That's why Protestantism allows gay marriage. You've got no leg to stand on, dude. So it's bad rhetoric, it's bad rhetoric. Keep shouting it. <laughs> Thank you. I will use this information to destroy my Protestant family and friends. <laughs> well, <laughs> Long live your Kurgan ways, my friend. You're gonna, you're in for an interesting life. Not always fun, but you will never be bored. A good amount of Catholics think that if they don't go to church every Sunday, that the church will reform itself. Is this a valid tactic? What has made the church reform in the past? Okay, there is no such thing as reforming the church, Mr. William Poole. The church is supernaturally protected by Jesus Christ. So you don't have to worry about the church. What you definitely should not do is go to a Novus Orco church every Sunday. In fact, it's best if you just get the fuck out, because that is not Catholic, not Christian, and is led by actual, complete, 100% satanic Satanists. It, they are Satanists. That is what they are. Uh, so by you going there, you're perpetrating their existence. So do not go to Novus Orca Church. Let them all collapse into poverty, which they're doing. The church, the Novus Orca churches are emptying at an extremely rapid rate. 
Say the privationist churches and chapels and meetings in people's homes uh, are continue to grow exponentially, and uh, the mass media hates this, so it doesn't talk about it. But that's what you want to do. There's no reforming. You don't need to reform anything because the Catholic Church exists. It's a tiny remnant of what it was in terms of size, but it's still there. It's visible. It's alive and well. Doesn't have a pope currently. That's not a big deal. We can carry on without a pope indefinitely as long as we have bishops, which we do. So, haha, ha, I'm far from in flame. You know I enjoy a friendly joust. Well, I know that you enjoy a friendly male joust, but I'm just not that way. Why are darky bear? Dilo's got your number, right? She tells you you're not straight. <laughs> But yeah, you know, you know, in all honesty, Archie Bear, by the way, uh, congratulations. I don't know if people here know it or if you want people to know it or whatever, but uh, Archie Bear just recently purchased uh, a whole bunch of, uh, of land. Uh, I'm not going to say where, although I, I believe it's a nice spot. And uh, he's planning to, um, I, I believe, get married and, and eventually build a house there, I think. Uh, so good on you. Well done, mate. That's, uh, that's awesome. That's very, very good. Um, of course, the very fact that you're here and the very fact that you know that Protestantism is wrong, deep in your heart, you know it. You know it. And if you ever have the courage to pick up God's battalions, if you ever have the courage to pick up of Iron Men and Saints, the Crusades by Harold Lamb, and if you ever have the courage to turn the pages and read it and read it and read it, you will soon realize that if you're not a Catholic, you are a wimpy, weak pussy that is destined to be stamped out of the earth by Muslims or whoever, probably Mexicans for you. So you know it, deep down, deep down, you're going to end up becoming a good, strong Catholic or just stay gay. You know, it's one of those things. You do need to repent. Best place to get your books uh, on Amazon. Just go on Amazon and, uh, and and get them on there. I'm a very lazy man. Uh, I don't want to do a lot of work if I can avoid it because I've got a lot of work to do anyway. And I've got small kids and uh, a wife and uh, work and books to write and things to think about and things to do. I mean, I tell you, boys, you know, those people that say, if I won the lottery, I would just... No, if I won the lottery, I definitely wouldn't carry on doing the other bits of stuff I need to do to survive. But I would also not, probably not be sitting on a beach for very long because uh, I've got so much shit that I would like to do. Awesome stuff, like literally buy huge tracts of land and make city-states. I would literally do that. If I had a bunch of money, I would just buy a huge tract of land put a wall around it, build a little keep, and then just have Catholics man the gates. And you, you get to come in if you're a Catholic or if you don't proselytize anything that goes against Catholicism. If you're quietly a guest, we'll let you stay. The minute you show yourself to be a social justice warrior or some kind of infiltrator, oh, that's when we have the entertainment on the weekends in the public square. And I'm thinking that in order to save money, we would probably have metal poles for the burnings of the stakes, what you're chained to. You know, we'll just gather the wood underneath. I'm in Indiana trying to get out of the city I'm stuck in. Uh, if you're in Indiana, you should probably get in touch with Nameless Bear, which I haven't been in touch with for a while. I should send him a message. Just stick around the channel, drop me an email, whatever. Uh, you know, if I take ages to reply, guys, don't don't hold it against me. I get a lot of emails and I, I, I'm busy. So it's like Kurgan knows how to motivate me. Of course I do, because I've got the truth on my side, being Catholic. <laughs> See how that works? <laughs> He's exploring the Spanish seabed for Atlantis, still on the books, dude. Yes, and it's not the Spanish, it's the Portuguese, but yes. But I need like 50 grand to do that uh, because it's about 30 grand to hire the, the type of sonar that you need to do that and the boat. And that's just for a few days, like a week. You probably pay 35, 40 grand. 
and the rest is, you know, I've got to feed my family, I've got to take the flights out there, find the boat, pay the guys, you know, and there's another guy that he came up with the idea, so I wouldn't want to do it by myself, I, you know, I, I always try to give credit where it's due, so it's his idea, I'd like to definitely do that. So if you guys want to do a GoFundMe that puts together at least 30, 40 grand, I mean, I'm I'm there. I'll do the I'll do the sonar scans for the Pantis um, with the guy who wrote the book about it, uh, which is called the Silver City, I think Atlantis, something like that. Forgot his name. Hello everyone. Hi AJ Rhino. Check out off the coast of Bimini. It's it's right now. Bimini is not Atlantis. Uh, I appreciate what you're saying, Escat de Silva, but I don't think that's where Atlantis is. I do know about Bimini. It's definitely something interesting there, but it's uh, not Atlantis. I love it. I would move my family to a Catholic city-state. My theory is that the U.S. will devolve to city-states. It's not just that. I've, I've been predicting this since at least 2014. Um, back in 2000, before actually before that, it was 2013. Yeah, 2013, I believe I had a um, the Vox used to have these brainstorms on, online, and um, in one of them I said, yeah, Christianity is going to be pivotal for the resurgence of Western civilization. And he made a comment, he said, oh, that's very interesting, because the guy who said that, he knew it was me, um, he's not a Christian. But logic is logic, you know, and I predicted that uh, things would return to city-states, because that is the most naturally workable unit of, let's say, government that is potentially honest without becoming completely corrupt uh, necessarily doesn't mean that it won't be completely corrupt but it is it's got the best chance of not necessarily being completely corrupt put it that way aj rhino getting out of new york city pennsylvania is in my future visiting this weekend if you're in pennsylvania there's a guy who emailed me aj rhino dropped me an email i'm gonna try and find that other email i think it's in pennsylvania that they're actually trying to do that so you guys you know that's part of the reason why i started to do a little bit of these live streams is because get together form a little community um i'm not into this whole cult of personality thing i don't believe in that but each one of you you know like i'm not a huge fan of gandhi but he did say some clever things and one of them was, be the change you want to see. So don't expect me to start the city-state. I'm not in the states. I'm not where you are. You start your city-state. Start it there. Start Archibar, the new Catholic city-state. And then I'll come visit, you know, once you've got it all up and running. And, and once I've got the Serenissima back, I'll invite some of you guys over, you know, if you're good Catholics. Do you know or have a theory on why Pope Benedict stepped down? I'm just curious where that it was in the first time in centuries. Um, as far as I know, Anne Barnhart has got the dirt on that one. And apparently it was because they were threatening to out his brother, who recently died, for being a pedophile. Um, sound logic. Um, it was going to out the, the, the older pedophile out. Um, and he stepped down because of that blackmail, apparently. Beware, AJ Rhino, there are wild Peruvians roaming the Pennsylvania plains. Oh, is that where Dilo is? Well, there you go, AJ Rhino. Dilo's there. She's making little Catholics one after the other, popping them out like a good girl. There's another guy there trying to buy a piece of land. I think, you know, you might already have a little community going there. It's one of the parts, Bimini. The final part is near the Gibraltar. The middle part is deep in the Atlantic. Could be, as Kat de Silva. Um, I, you know, I read Plato, and uh, none of the other bits inside the Mediterranean makes any sense. This guy's theory, I went to the city that he said, I saw the weird alphabet that he talks about in his book, it exists, it's real. Uh, I think he's got a solid, solid idea about it. I found a pyro club up there, and they like my fireworks bid from the 4th gonna try to meet them next weekend there you go i'll do that kurgan i'm looking to make friends haha -ha. priestess of logos there you go all right guys it's been a while already i didn't mean to do a long one it's already an hour i don't know time flies whenever i'm talking with you people so thank you all very much um 
please spread the word, not just for my sake at all, but for, um, for Ian MacLeod, my ancient enemy from Scotland. And uh, help him out if you can. It doesn't matter if you can only throw five bucks. Throw five bucks, you know. He's a good guy, and help him out. And by the way, he's not a Catholic. So there you go, you know. Archie Bear, just close your ears about that. That's not for you. You, you. you start to become a good Catholic boy, right? Go become a good Catholic boy. Build. You've got enough land now to build a small city states. Don't let me down. Can't wait to get your new book. I, may, I can't wait to get it out. I, it's one of those things that's just fucking driving me nuts. I need to finish it soon as, and that's uh, Sax Ultra. Yeah, I don't know. The kid's probably asleep. I'm going to give it a shot, though. Oh no, it's not good. This is not going well. Pause. Why is that loose? It makes me wonder if somebody's been at this thing. That's not good at all. See, the little important bit just fell out, which it shouldn't do. Wondering if one of the kids was in there, but no, they, they know their lives are not worth that much, so it shouldn't have been. Okay, this is turning out to be one of those weird. I got this right? I don't even know. Uh, let's see. I haven't actually, you, you know that the only time I've ever like played with this thing is when I actually do the, the little intros, right? You all know that, I hope. Oh, it's twisted. Now let's see. Oh no, this is the wrong position. Yeah, I don't think this is going to be very entertaining. So, what are you guys writing there? Probably laughing your ass off. You've got to do a duet, my violin, your sack. You won't need matches to set Francis on fire. <laughs> That's very good. <laughs> Sex in my phone. <laughs> I don't know what that is, but I'll have to Google it, I guess. Nah, guys, it's not going to work tonight. I've got to spend some time to set this up. A little bit had fallen out. No, it's not going to work. I'll do it, and I'll try and remember to do an intro the next one. But again, thanks for, for being here, and uh, I'll speak to you soon. Have a good night.
Oh, I am still live. <laughs> oh, well, there you go. Good night.